So today we're going to take that distributing that we did yesterday and we're going to connect it with solving. We're actually going to only do the first part of 1.7 here virtually. We're going to do the solving equations using the distributive property. Absolute value equations we'll do in class when we get together again. So solving using the distributive property, let's start by reviewing the distributing or box method. Um, because most people seem to prefer the distributing method, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, keep in mind that it's everything in the first times everything in the second. If you prefer the box method, then go ahead and do your um, work using the box method. So this would be 6x times 2x, 12x squared. 6x times 5 is plus 30x, negative 11 times 2x minus 22x, negative 11 times 5 is minus 55. And so I have 12x squared plus 8x minus 55. That would be my simplified form using the distributive property. It's even easier, in this case I had a binomial times a binomial, so two terms times two terms. It's even easier when I have a monomial, a single term times a binomial, because then I don't have to double distribute. I only need to distribute once. Watch out for signs, though. So this is negative 30x squared. Also watch out for your power rules. And then a negative times a negative is a positive. It would be negative 2x times negative 3x is positive 6x. And I'm done with my distributing on that problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our solving using distributing. So it's going to be using some of those techniques in solving that you've done many times before in many classes, but sometimes we just don't always remember how to do them. So I'll go through it slowly, and if you find some ways that you can um, skip some steps or speed stuff up, you're always more than welcome to. So I'm going to distribute 2y minus 4 equals 6. Now what I have is a two-step problem. I have to undo the subtraction, so I will add the 4. Keep in mind that whatever I do on one side, I do it on the other side. And by the sides, I mean of the equal sign. That equal sign is sort of the divider there. So I'm going to undo the fact that I subtracted 4 from this 2y. I'll add it back. That leaves me with 2y equals 10. And then I can get rid of that multiplication by dividing. So y equals 5. Sometimes people can look at this a different way, and they said, what, what do I multiply by 2 to get 10? So y would be 5. Or if I'm going to do it very algebraically, I would do the division. So that was a basic two-step with a single distributing, but sometimes you're going to have even more um, complicated, where you'll have like a double distribute. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here on this next one. If you are choosing to use the box method, then off to the side, do your box method simplifying, and then bring it back in. I'm going to do the distributive property. So this is 5x squared plus 43. That's on the um, left-hand side of the equation. I'm not doing anything with that. And then on the right, I'm going to go ahead and do my double distribute. So that's 5x squared plus 6x, then I'll distribute the negative 1 part of it. That's minus 5x minus 6. I'm going to combine like terms. So now I have 5x squared plus 43 equals 5x squared plus x minus 6, because 6 minus 5 is 1. I don't need to write the 1 there. Now I need to start cleaning this up a little bit. And so I'm going to do that. This might be new to some of us. I'm going to do that by starting to get rid of anything that is squared. If I subtract 5x squared from both sides, I actually remove that 5x squared on both sides of the equation, which leaves me then with 43 equals x minus 6. And now, even though this looked really complicated for a while, it turns out to be a not so bad equation to solve. So, so to finish this up, I'll add 6 on both sides, and I get 49 equals x. So that distributing property is going to sometimes add an extra step and might give me a squared that I have to deal with. Moving on for 5 and 6, sometimes in 5 I'm going to have like a double distribute. I'm going to have more distributing um, there than um, 
than just, you know, like one time in that previous problem or the previous two, just one. Now I have a double distribute. I have to do it twice, once on each side. Sometimes I might even have to do it twice on one side. Just depends on the problem. But I'll go ahead and distribute x times x and x times 4. That's x squared plus 4x. And then I do 3 times x and 3 times 4, so plus 3x plus 12 equals, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, x times x, x times 2, so that's x squared plus 2x, and then 1 times x, and 1 times 2, that's plus x plus 2. Then I'll combine like terms, so I'm going to combine the terms on the left, I'm actually going to highlight these, I can combine these like terms on the left, and I combine the like terms on the right. I'm going to do that simplifying first. So the left becomes x squared plus 7x plus 12. And on the right it becomes x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, so now I'll start getting rid of that x squared thing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the x squared on both sides. And when I do that, it actually cancels out on both sides of the equation, it eliminates that, leaving me with 7x plus 12 equals 3x plus 2. Now I have variables on both sides. Now there are a lot of different techniques in doing this, but one recommendation that I have is when I have a variable on both sides, I want to remove the smallest one. So 3 is smaller than 7, so I'll remove the 3x. Because I did it on one side of the equal sign, phew, excuse me, I have to do it on the other side of the equal sign as well. So now I have 4x minus 3x, or sorry, 7x minus 3x. Sometimes my brain jumps ahead. 7x minus 3x gives me 4x plus 12, but 3x minus 3x cancels out, so I'm left with only the 2 on that right-hand side. Well, now I'll go ahead and... Remove the 12. I'm just following these steps of solving equations that you've been doing for really a long time. Maybe you're like, oh, I don't remember doing all that. But I know that they teach all of these things when you're in pre-algebra as well as algebra. And so um, it's just one of those things where we're just going to continue to kind of work our way through slowly. Um, and uh, try and get x alone by undoing each of the operations. So I subtracted the 3x on both sides, or the x, yeah, I subtracted the x squareds on both sides, then I removed the 3x on both sides, 4x plus 12, subtracted the 12, that gave me 4x equals negative 10. Now, what do I multiply 4 by to get negative 10? That might not be very obvious, so this is where I might use that division as help. And so I have to move over here because I kind of ran out of room. I divided by 4 on both sides. That leaves me with, on the left, x alone equals negative 10 fourths. Or better than that, x equals, I like to reduce it, negative 5 halves. Sometimes people want to plug that in your calculator. And I wouldn't mark it wrong if you did, if you did negative 10 divided by 4 or negative 5 divided by 2. But I almost exclusively leave mine in fraction form, so x equals negative 5 halves is the answer on that particular problem. All right, last one up. Again, I'm going to distribute 2x plus 2. Then I've got an additional plus 3 over there. And on the right-hand side, distribute, that's 3x minus 3. So now I'm going to simplify. So distribute, then simplify. Simplifying means I combine like terms. can highlight the things that I can combine on the same side. I don't want my highlighter to cross over that equal sign. So these are things that are on the same side that can be combined. So now I have 2x plus 5 equals 3x minus 3. Now I'm back to that variable situation that I had before. I need to remove a variable from... Um, one side, so I pick the smaller one. That's not the law, it's just kind of what I do. So I'm going to remove the smaller variable. If I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. When I subtract the 2x on the left, it's gone. When I subtract it on the right, that leaves me with 1x, which I write as just x. Then I can finish this equation by adding 3 on both sides. 
opposite of my subtracting 3, I'm going to bring it back, add 3. That leaves me with 8 equals x. So your job is going to be to try a few of these. What I would like you to do for your homework is 1.7 problems 1 through 6. So 1.7 problems 1 through 6 is your homework assignment tonight. You could definitely come with questions tomorrow um, or uh, the next time we meet in class. And um, I will talk to you guys soon.